thank you everyone for joining us. Um, so we're going to get into a discussion about the future of mobility and uh, all your different projects that you're working on. Uh, we are a bit tight on time, so please, if you've got something to say, uh, just jump in. Don't wait for me to, to politely uh, <laughs> come to your turn. Um, now, we've heard quite a lot from Yang Shi Zhang already about OFO. Um, perhaps just to start us off, could the rest of you give maybe um, a, a 20, 30 second overview of what you're doing and what stage your kind of companies are at at the moment. So, Remo, let's start with you with Lilium because I think flying cars is uh, yeah. <laughs> it's always a good place to start. <laughs> no, we always like flying cars. So, so Lilium, uh, what we believe in and what our vision is is to, to create uh, on-demand air transportation. And that means that, uh, and, and as Nichols alluded already to it, uh, you can take off and land uh, everywhere you want. We, we can, we're creating a vertical takeoff jet that is electric, um, so you don't have local pollution, it is quiet, and you can uh, hopefully one day get access very close in, in all sorts of communities. Um, also, we're building this uh, this division that is going to be very fast and it's going to have a pretty high range. So, so we are thinking already about the, the future and the next generation of, of infrastructure and high-speed connectivity, be that in, in developed countries, but of course also in, in underdeveloped countries, where you can start thinking about what is actually that, uh, that uh, transportation uh, network and needs of the future. Right, and Inigo, uh, Nicholas explained a bit about OnTrack and how you're trying to um, increase efficiency, basically, in, in road freight. Um, where are you at at the moment? Yeah, well, we, um, we started two years ago. Our aim is to uh, optimize trucking industry by connecting seamlessly shippers and carriers. Um, we focus on optimizing all the links of the value chain, but, but mainly uh, the utilization of the trucks. That's our, our greatest ambition. Uh, by using um, uh, technology and, Im and improving, as Nicholas said very wisely, the routing. Great. And um, Carolina, you are with Atomico. Um, why do you think now is a good time for innovation in the mobility sector? Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, there's a lot of technology enablers that have improved and have come to a, a place where some of these things can, can reach the masses and can really scale mobile, obviously. Um, and then you have everything happening in artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, internet of things, the cloud. And these are all things, you know, everyone here takes, or you know, certainly OFO and on truck advantage of the mobile and GPS and location trackers. So I think that's been part of it. And then I think that there's a, the second part is it's always been a very big issue, right? Moving people, moving things. Um, and so I think revolutions have continued to happen. And, and, and now we're here with, with kind of the new generation. Uh, so speaking of some of the technologies that are enabling these, um, I, I mean, how important are these technologies or are specific technologies uh, to enabling you guys to, to do what you do? Um, Remo, I imagine putting yeah, together something that can take off vertically, it, that's quite a tech problem. <laughs> it is quite a tech problem, and I think different, of course, there's a lot of technologies that come together that are enabling it, but um, equally at Lilium, we are building very deep, novel tech expertise. Mm -hmm. So um, when we first started, our founder, Daniel, was basically told by, by the professors and so on, it's not going to fly. And he simply said, I did the physics and I know it's going to fly and it, it does fly. <laughs> so, so, so on the one hand, uh, we, we are really working on, on that. Of course, on the other hand, you have uh, quite rapid advancement in battery technology. Uh, we believe, uh, of course, to continue to see uh, uh, development and evolution there. And, and uh, I think it's probably a, a payback from the electrification of the, the car industry as well. So, so we'll have that advantage. Um, but there's a number of other technologies that we are um, directly building and working on besides, of course, the building the jet and the aerodynamics, how you do that, such as like air transportation, uh, how do we manage airspace, how do you actually land and start and, and, and making full use of that. Mm -hmm. And lastly, of course, like having mobile technology that, that is already ubiquitous, uh, making that uh, into an absolute seamless customer experience. So all of that, a lot of things are coming together there. Mm -hmm. And the mobile tech is absolutely crucial to OFO, right? I mean, that's uh, the only way it can function is, is through the mobile technologies that we have today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, one very important factor for, for, for our business model to succeed, succeed is that we need to have very accurate GPS tracking 
of, of the bike, right? Because uh, regularly, like the like the original GPS has like five to ten meters, sort of like inaccurate level, right? So uh, basically, like right now, we have uh, the new network called MBILT, narrowband um, IoT network, being built up, which has much better on um, accuracy and also like especially in the city, right? A lot of like uh, the cement, the, the, the buildings, etc., which will make the make the uh, uh, especially like in European cities, there are a lot there are a lot of like antique buildings and then the small streets and make it harder to track. Uh, but with this new technology in place, with the new network in place, for example. Right now, we're in Spain. We launched Madrid. We launched uh, in, in Portugal. We launched uh, Cascais, Lisbon, um, and this in, in all the cities like the, the pretty ancient city uh, with the small streets, high walls, and stuff. Uh, we all we all launched with this new technology, which give us a very accurate, like less than one meter, sort of like uh, tracking inaccuracy level. So um, yeah, I mean, technology is, is definitely important here. Yeah. And Inigo, would it be fair to say that you know road freight is perhaps a little less, or has been conventionally a little less technologically advanced? Than, than some of these other um, proposals. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, we haven't seen a change uh, in, in, in the tracking industry for the last 50 years, although technology changed a lot. So um, in our case, for example, we just launched in, in the UK. We, we found uh, something that's very interesting. It is a great challenge. In the UK, there's a shortage of, of trackers. So if you see that there, there's a lack of about 30,000 trackers in, in um, in the UK, which, may, which makes uh, everything very inefficient, very difficult to, to find track. But on the other hand, you have 30% of the, of the kilometers are run empty in the UK, if you think in long hauling. And in short hauling, it's even more. It could be up to 40%. So it's not that you have less tracks than what you need. It's that you, you don't have a, 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 the right way to connect shippers and trackers and to organize the, the shipments. So technology, technology that we're developing, it aims to, to uh, optimize that and make it um, increase the utilization of the tracks that we already have. Mm -hmm. And now the title of this whole session has been about um, the positive impact that entrepreneurs um, can have not only for consumers but also for the planet. Um, and all of your companies have kind of a, a green or, or a clean element uh, to them. How important is that to your business? Is it just, you know, a, a side effect or has it been sort of part of it from the start? Well, from, from our case, um, it was uh, from the very beginning we, we saw that there was a, a huge problem in congestion in cities, and you can tell that London, for example, is a great example for that. And um, uh, we knew that by optimizing the, the tracking, the, the tracks that, we, the, that they are already uh, working, we would increase, uh, um, sorry, we, we would decrease the congestion and also decrease the carbon dioxide that it's uh, um, on, on the air. So it's a... Uh, um, it was. It was at the very beginning. It was on the on the plans to improve those major problems that we were finding in in cities all over the world. Uh, I think yes, absolutely. It's been from the beginning. Obviously, of course, we have electrifications of cars, and 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 where our vision is is of course the next stage of electrification of of air transportation and and uh, creating that that crossover and, and uh, of course electrification you're always having uh, an element of, of uh, your hostage to, to where you are so so however the electricity is produced in, in country that you're in but we also believe we'll be seeing a positive trend there and and, and bringing that to the air is, 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 is important doubly on the one hand it's of course electric and on the other hand it's actually the local emissions that very often um, are the biggest uh, exposure to, to where you have a lot of people living and of course, doing that from, from, from the air, um, on top of that, you're spreading the, the carbon dioxide uh, and, and, and the, the kind of the, the harmful gases in, in an even more harmful way. So I think that's definitely been part of our evolution and we, we do believe that it's going to be a fantastic future as we go uh, into electrification of, of air. And is all this part, as um, Nicholas uh, suggested earlier, is that um, good business sense or is it just from the good of your heart? <laughs> So, uh, well, so our experience is, def uh, is, is just like a very simple problem to solve. Basically, uh, our founding team, each, each one of us got like five bikes on average stolen during, uh, <laughs> during our university stays. So we would just think that, oh, maybe it's, it's better to have a shared platform so we don't, we don't need to worry about like bike theft or like maintenance. Or like, uh, you know, in China, like we, we, we cannot bring the, um, bring the bike uh, to the subway, uh, to the subway train and you carry it with you. It's, 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 it's not allowed. Um, so normally like you get out of the city, for example, in the city of Beijing, get out of a train station, and you uh, you see actually you still have like 1.5 miles to walk to, to to go, but 
it's, it's, it's not easy to take a car, and if you don't have a bike, you have to walk, it's kind of not, not convenient. And at the same time, you see like a lot of private bikes on the street. Each one of them have a private lock. So it's like, kind of like I have a transmission method by my side, but I cannot use it. So it's not, a, it's not good, right? So basically like at the beginning, I, I think we always start from like solving a very, uh, like, like real uh, pain points of us getting around the city. Mm -hmm. And Carolina, as an investor, what, what do you look for in, in the mobility sector when you know, companies come, for you, come to you uh, with, a, with a pitch, with a proposal? Yeah, of course. I think um, in, in any sector we look at, we're looking for big pain points, right? And I think sustainability issues are often very large issues. Like we know we're going to have an issue feeding the planet. We know we're underutilized on the way we move people and the way we do it today is, is inefficient and it's not great for the environment. Um, so solving a very large pain point is attractive to us. And then, you know, we're global investors and we're always looking for the best, most ambitious entrepreneurs who are solving the biggest, the biggest problem. So that, that carries through and mobility is clearly one of them. Mm -hmm. And can I just add to the point around, around business? I do actually believe it's important that it is good business because very often I think what you're doing, what we're doing, it's going to take a lot of investment. It's actually some, some very fundamental change to the infrastructure. And if it is not good business, it's, it's very often like, you know, how is it going to continue for another mm -hmm. 10 years? People lose interest and actually you're going to lose some of the momentum that you can build with, with brilliant ideas. So, so I do actually think the two um, don't make any sort of uh, unruly un, un connection, but I think are, are actually reinforcing each other. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, they have to go hand in hand. Um, now, I'm interested because obviously we've got uh, people here from a wide range of different countries, um, and one of the main challenges that, that companies in the mobility sector and other sectors face obviously is regulation, uh, and that's been a big topic um, in mobility. Um, in the UK, we've had a lot about um, Uber, and also some of the bike sharing startups have um, you know, come, come across challenges when they, they've uh, realize that they're not um, doing what regulators want them to do. Um, how have you found the regulatory environment in, um, in your different cities and countries? Um, well, shall we start with you and you go? Yeah, sure. In, in our case, it's, uh, our market is, is highly regulated. It, um, it works more or less the same all over Europe, which is something that we found very, very interesting, very good. Um, although here, for example, in the UK, we, we are facing other problems. We, we, as I said, um, there are, there are, there's a shortage of 30,000 trackers in the UK. 12% of the trackers that you already have are from outside the UK. Um, so Brexit is not going to make things easier. So mm. Brexit may, may, um, may make it uh, more difficult to find, uh, to find a, a track. Well, I probably believe we're going to win the, the, the competition on regulation. So, so of course, airlines, <laughs> aircraft manufacturing is, is one of the most highly regulated areas mm. that you can be in. Um, in. In Europe, we found a very positive uh, regulatory environment. So, so the, 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 uh, the department in charge, they're having a very forward-thinking way of rather than saying hey, to us, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. They're actually more saying you've got to achieve the safety level. And, and how you're doing that uh, is down to you. And, and different to, to the US, where they're still probably a step behind and we hope that they're going to catch up, that creates an, an incredible opportunity for innovation and for us to, to actually go and work together with them on, on new innovation, how are we actually doing um, uh, building an aircraft. And, um, and then, yeah, it's, it's generally positive. And of course, then the next stage of our evolution, but once we created the aircraft, is you know where can we fly? And that's where we're already seeing advances from all over the world, from, from different regulators and, and cities and governments uh, to come to us. And, and, and let's talk about how we're going to get from uh, where we are today, where, of course, uh, very urban spaces are probably no-fly zones in many places. How do we open that up? And then outside of urban spaces, it's, it's a pretty open sky at this point in time. Mm. And, and OFO started in Beijing and, as you say, is now in, in many different continents. How does the UK and Europe uh, compare on that front for Absolutely. bike Absolutely. sharing? <laughs> Absolutely. So um, probably like we, stay, we take like one step back and ask a question like what, um, what a city needs. Right, so basically, like people are leaving the city and uh, they, they get around the city, and as normally there's a there's a problem. I think it's kind of like universal. Uh, it's called last mile problem, last mile commuting problems. I think that is um, what like the, the the regulators or the city government uh, try to try to solve. That's that's the problem. So that's why we have all this docking based um, bike sharing program in most of the cities. In China, we have two companies cover each cover 200 cities together 400 cities we have the docking base the station before we came and i think most of the european cities us cities this very similar um, but the thing is that um, 
not many people are using them, right? So um, um, it's, it's, it's like a functioning as a, as a bus stop, right? So and at the same time, uh, it's quite costly. So it normally requires subsidy. So uh, for us, actually, uh, we solve the same problem um, and we have uh, more um, accessible accessibility <laughs> to the, to, for the people. And uh, uh, the most important thing is that we solve this problem and we do not need taxpayers' money. We're self-sustained. So, um, so that's, uh, that's the problem we solve. So uh, I think we come to uh, different markets in the world and we always be transparent uh, when, we, when we approach to the, to the local authorities. We tell them what we, do, what we try to do, what do we try to solve, uh, the problem we try to solve. And, uh, and we always have discussed like how uh, is the best way, what is the best way to do it in this specific city. All right, so you, you look at all the cities we launched, all the country we go to, uh, our approach is always we get uh, the government support and um, uh, the, the, the community, community support before we roll out bikes. So, so yes, every city we have that approach. So, um, so yeah, so far we see pretty supportive um, uh, feedback from the regulatory side. Excellent. I'm afraid I'm getting the angry flashing red light, which means that we are <laughs> running out of time. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'll give, finish with one last question for you, Carolina, which is just, um, obviously we've got so many different um, aspects of mobility represented here on stage at the moment. Is there one thing that you're waiting to come across your, your desk or come into your office to invest in that, that you haven't seen yet? Well, I think we've covered air, trucks, bikes, maybe ships. Ships. <laughs> flying ships. Electric, yeah. Electric, Electric flying everything. Ships. So autonomous if there's everything. any uh, yeah. entrepreneurs here, uh, Carolina's yeah. just waiting for you to pitch her. Uh, thank you much, everyone, thank very you. much, everyone, for joining us thank you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.